Welcome back to another base building video. Today we're going to be looking at the Baron. The perfect base for a solo looking to dominate a server offline and online, while also keeping low key. The Baron is a dirt cheap hexagon base with a full shooting floor, roof peaks, and everything you would want in a solo base. With only a small amount of re materials required and cheap upkeep, this base requires little effort to set up. The Baron starts off as a honeycombed hexagon base, then after building out into the wide gaps, then the gatehouses, and finally the two externals. The base's full build cost and upkeep is now displayed on the screen. As you can see, it's reasonably cheap for what you're getting, and upkeep is incredibly easy to manage. As you can see, it has two Mr. Satori style disconnectables. It is as easy as just placing a ramp and to reconnect it, just place back the floor frames. Gate houses are very small and compact. There are ramp peaks that show into the compound, allowing you to defend from your gate houses. The compound is fitted with two bedrooms on either side of the base with a locker, allowing quick respawns to get back out on the battlefield. Now into the base. We have a loot room immediately on the right side, a vending machine with a secret locker behind it, two more loot rooms, and a secret locker next to the bunker. The triangle roof bunker is as easy as breaking the twig to open it and replacing the twig and roof to replace it. The TC is unlootable, forcing to destroy the triangle to loot the TC. Third floor has a bedroom with a battery located behind the locker. Peaks are very strong with no blind spots whatsoever around the entire base. These corners allow you to gain another angle on any raider, and above give you a peek onto your roof to help defend, and allow you to jump up onto your roof.
The roof has a vending machine bunker. Placing a twig ramp will open up the wall and allowing you to loot vending machines on either side. Forcing any player to destroy the external wall to loot the vending machines. The starting in for this base is quite small, just being a stone half moon. Place this TC in this corner, along with a double door frame on this side. This allows space for two furnaces, a workbench, and a couple of bags. After every single section, I will be showing you the final grade and placements for everything inside each unit. Due to the small starter unit, I recommend that you expand quite quickly. It is only a stone half moon, then wall yourself in, but place low walls instead of a full wall here to act for the bunker. Then place a furnace or some sort of deployable as a jump up to allow you to get onto the roof. Now just build that over here and place a twig or wood half wall to act as you jump up onto the roof. You will be breaking this later, so don't upgrade it past wood. Place a single door frame on the right with a full wall on the left a single door frame will act as the gateway into your secret locker. Do not place a roof over top of this. Later on, this is going to act as our jump up. Starting off the second floor, we're just going to place our honeycomb around the whole base and bring it up one layer. On this side, we're going to act as the jump up. You're just going to place a door frame and a window and then furnaces for the jump up. Now we're going to wall in around the second floor. Place a tweak floor over top of the bunker. This is going to help you place your locker and then after destroy it.
This is gonna be our first loot room. There'll be another identical one on the right side. Place roofs over top of the whole thing, except above the jump up. You can now place all of your deployables like boxes and doors. Now we're gonna build the drop boxes. As you can see, if you do not place the second wall, you can make another four box loot room. I prefer just to do a locker so I can place my workbench in front. Sometimes placing the workbench on the other wall may cause the workbench to be destroyed when replacing the bunker. The locker bunker is as easy as placing the locker within the triangle and then just placing your vending machine right in front. Make sure you've locked the locker and everyone on your team has entered the code. Now you can build your jump up with your cap off on the top. You can cap off this jump up because we will not be using this as the next jump up. Now moving on to the wide gaps. We're just going to place two triangles here that are connected to the main base. For this side, you're not wide gapping anything, you're just creating a peak. Place one more triangle to allow you to place your door frame on top, and then place two triangles like this and a half moon to give you your compound bedroom. You can place a door frame here and then destroy the foundation. This just makes everything a lot more cleaner and easy to move around the compound. Now do the exact same thing on the other side. Wide gaps are incredibly easy to build. Just place a triangle and then build off four squares and destroy everything you just placed except the last square. Then you're gonna place two triangles back with a square and then a half moon. Now destroy everything except the half moon. Wrap triangles around like I do. This is gonna build your corner piece. 
These triangles are not all connected, so we're going to have to build the base of the peaks to make sure they don't decay. Now, if you build a full hexagon and then destroy the back ones, we're going to build our gatehouses and external. Make sure both doors swing in inwards to create the airlock effect. The externals are incredibly simple and there are plenty of videos online going into more in depth on how to build them. And of course, now replicate on the other side. Build up one door frame on either side, and then place triangles on top. This is going to be what you're going to stand on for your corner peaks and jump up. Then place two windows stacked on top of each other on either side. Floors in the middle, a door frame, and a window. Place two floors and roofs on top of that, pointing inwards. Once again, the exact same thing on the other side.
Make sure every floor is upgraded to metal, along with any wall underneath the shooting floor, i.e. the second floor, is all metal as well. This is most likely where they're going to be rocketing in from, so it is important that it is as powerful as possible. These peaks are quite simple. Just place up two metal door frames on either side, with floors on top, and then one set of windows on either side. You can replace these door frames with windows. The door frames provide more visibility, but some people definitely prefer the windows. Build up door frames here to improve stability to allow you to place the final triangles. Now we're going to build a little area with the battery and bedroom around where the jump up is. Now we're going to place all of our embrasures inside the windows along with the doors on the peaks. Place door frames around the inside of the peaks. This is going to give you the stability to place all the floors on the roof. Upgrade any floor that's above a vital part of the base to metal to prevent it from being full rockets. Now we're going to build the other wide gap. Again, do as I do. You do not need to do the entire roof before you do this side. I just did this for sake of the video and convenience.
Now just finishing up the bases, we're going to do the vending machine roof and the windmill. Be very careful when placing the vending machines on either side, because if you place it too far, they will be able to loot them. And if you place it too close, you won't be able to place the wall. If either of this happens, destroy the wall, then just use them as a shop on top of your roof. Finally, just place the windmill here, build up too high, and then you're done. Easy as that. Thank you for watching, and please go check out any other base on my channel.